Tally ho there champs and welcome to the show. Today we're going to be looking at Little Daddy, the new Cabby Lake version of the Alienware 13 R3 gaming laptop. So this is with the latest Nvidia drivers, the latest Cabby Lake and actually has had a BIOS update too so you're going to get up to date performance figures here. Now I have reviewed the Daddy and the Big Daddy as I call them which is the 15 and the 17 inch Alienware gaming laptops. If you want to check those reviews out I'll leave a link in the description there but this is Little daddy because we know Alienware are the daddy of gaming laptops. This starts at $2,099 Australian. In the US they start at $999 but that gets you like a TN panel and a 2 gigabyte GTX 1050 yeah I think you want to stay clear of that one. But this model here costs $2,949 in Australia and the prices are much better in the US as usual. <laughs> You guys are lucky in the US. You can get the OLED version, the touchscreen 1440p OLED version for like 2K in America. This, this no compromise quad core 13 inch gaming laptop with a GTX 1060 in it for 2K with an OLED screen. Yeah, wow. I wish we could get that in Australia for that price. We can't even get it at all at the moment in Australia. So this one here is not the OLED version. And this model here has an i7 7700HQ Cabby Lake CPU and that can burst up to 3.8 gigahertz clock speed of 2.8 gigahertz this has 16 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz DDR4 RAM 512 gigabyte SSD you cannot get hard drives in this model here it only has two slots two M.2 slots this has a 13.3 inch full HD 300 near anti-clear IPS panel killer ethernet and of course that 6 gigabyte GTX 1060 76 watt hour battery so this thing really packs a punch and it's a 13 inch package and you're getting virtually full desktop gaming performance we're talking quad core now not dual core like the older alienware 13 inches it's 24 millimeters thick which isn't too bad for a gaming laptop and it's 2.6 kilos that's 5.8 pounds the design is of course uniquely alienware you won't mistake this laptop for any other laptop i actually do like this design yes it does have that utilitarian tough look with the unique sort of angles and that offset hinge where the cooling fans are offset from where the screen pivots and this is made out of premium materials we're talking I mean there's bits of plastic on it but we're talking copper, magnesium, alloys, it all is high end materials on this and the top is an alloy, you have the Alienware logo which you can custom colour to any colour you like with the Alien FX, underneath you have that vent and you have that another alloy panel that can easily come off to upgrade the M.2 SSD which there are two slots there and you can upgrade the RAM. It has two M.2 slots which is fine with me because M.2 SSDs are fairly affordable at the moment and it's just much better to have an SSD as your storage rather than a mechanical hard drive. So on the left hand side you have a vent, USB 3, microphone and headphone jack and one of the speakers. On the right hand side you have the other speaker, USB-C port, USB 3 port and another small vent. On the back is where you get all the killer I.O. You have mini display port, HDMI 2.0, Thunderbolt 3, you have the Alienware graphics amplifier and you have the power jack there and on either side you have the vent. Now just talking about the graphics amplifier port, the best graphics amplifier you can get is the Alienware one. When I tested the Alpha R2, which you can check out that review if you want, I used the graphics amplifier and I was benching pretty much exactly the same as what I was with a desktop and a 1080 in the graphics amplifier. So a 6800K with a 1080 desktop was benching the same as the Alpha R2 with the Alienware graphics amp and a 1080 in it. Now the reason why the Alienware graphics amplifier is better than a Thunderbolt 3 graphics amp is because the Alienware graphics amp port does not have to reserve bandwidth for other devices like the Thunderbolt 3 has to. So you get more throughput there and you get better performance. Virtually no bottleneck compared to a desktop PC from what I tested with the Alpha R2. Now the Alpha R2 virtually does have a desktop CPU in it but I can't imagine that the Cabby Lake quad core that goes into this Alienware 13 is going to be too much of a bottleneck if any at all. Now like with all Alienware laptops the keyboard is fantastic course you can program the colors with the Alien FX you can turn it off too if you like you have four segments so you can do four individual colors on the keyboard it's a fantastic keyboard 
beautiful amount of travel. It is heaven for your fingers. Believe me on this, it's fantastic. The trackpad, well, it's not as good as the keyboard. It does what it has to do. It's not a bad trackpad. You get the individual left and right clicks there, but it's a gaming laptop and you're going to be gaming. You're going to be using a mouse or you're going to be using a controller most of the time. And when you need the trackpad, it's very serviceable and it lights up too and you can customize the color of that as well you get a hd webcam here and it's infrared it's got that toby track in that creepy stuff that yeah i see WikiLeaks, and yeah i want to put tape over it <laughs> um great technology does the job and you'll be able to use windows hello now this display here is the full hd 60 hertz 300 nit ips panel it is a cracking panel for gaming i don't notice any ghost in the response time is good the viewing angles are good, there's not much reflection of course, it's not a glossy screen and I don't really have any complaints about it, of course it's not going to have the wide colour gamuts of professional monitors used for Photoshop and video editing and stuff but that's not what it's for, it's a gaming laptop and of course you can get that killer touch 1440p OLED screen with 400 nits of brightness so if you can afford it just get that screen, I mean there's no other better screen for a gaming laptop and I really do wish this had that OLED screen, but it doesn't. But this full HD one is, is very good too. Now sound, the sound is on the side, so it's not on the front like other Alienware laptops. Pretty good sound actually, I like it. It's meaty, it's rich, and it doesn't really distort that much at the higher volumes either. So I'm quite happy with these speakers. So they're fairly decent speakers. Now battery life, you have a 76 watt hour battery here. I was able to get five, six hours battery life out of it. General, just web surfing, YouTube, etc. I think the Cabby Lake helps out here. So you do get a bit of extra battery life over the Skylake model. For a gaming laptop, the battery life is fine. Now performance, I guess you guys want to know how this performs and I will be doing a full gaming review of this. So make sure you stay tuned for that, subscribe. But just to sum up the gaming performance, you're going to be playing any games, high, very high settings, 1080p, at over 60 frames per second easily pretty much every game is easily over 60 frames per second the only one that just made 60 frames per second was deuce x mankind divided which is a really demanding title and i was still able to get 62 frames per second 1080p high settings which is really good for deuce x i always say deuce x D dsx sorry and just some other benchmarks you're getting like 114 frames per second gta 5 very high settings battlefield 1 you're getting 80 frames per second on high settings and crisis 3 you nearly get 90 frames per second high settings so this thing games like a champ it's not that far below what a desktop 1060 will be doing and i've told you i've updated to the latest bios and before i done the bios update when i done the fire strike and time spy stress test it would pass but it was like 97 percent the score and once i done the bios update it passed with 98 percent so you can actually see there is a tangible difference between before BIOS to post BIOS update. Pretty much the temperatures, depending on what game, were between 80 and 90 degrees, both on the CPU and GPU. It didn't throttle at all, obviously it passed those tests. The heat, it's not that bad. Okay, it does get warm. Every gaming laptop gets warm. It's not too loud. Out of all the gaming laptops I've reviewed, these new generation Alienwares are pretty good. I mean, all gaming laptops are loud, but these aren't that bad. And especially comparing them to like the Predator I reviewed and look, you can just go see many razor blade reviews and you'll see that they're very loud. These ones aren't that loud compared to those laptops. Laptops. So in conclusion, the little daddy, is it worth the money, is it worth getting? Well, it is just bar none the best 13-inch gaming laptop. I'll give my tally-ho top draw, best 13-inch gaming laptop. That OLED screen you can get as an option, which I'm crying that I didn't have that model, but the OLED 1440p touch display, 400 nits brightness there, full gaming performance. We're talking quad-core gaming performance with a GTX 1060 in a small package. You know, we're talking nearly desktop performance and a small 13-inch laptop. It's fantastic. I cannot afford this laptop any higher praise it's just the best in class and i think alienware should actually be proud of this 13 inch laptop especially with the oled screen i mean i don't think there's anything that beats this in the 13 inch segment so that's it guys stay tuned for my gaming review i've got lots more tech content coming so make sure you subscribe if you want to see that i'd like to really thank you for watching and until next time guys tally ho